that you can use and put in your backpack and you've got them because you have the Holy Spirit there with you. Just like Ed, when he goes out, let's say if he's got some night vision goggles, when it gets night time, he may need those. Okay? <clears throat> and you may encounter another person who needs what the Holy Spirit is about to deliver to them. And all you have to do is be responsive to what the Holy Spirit is doing at that given point. There's nothing hard, guys, about the gifts of the Spirit and moving in the gifts of the Spirit. There's nothing hard about it. You see people who are more proficient in some than others, but the truth is it's, it's all about hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit. It's all about hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes you will speak these things and you won't realize them until afterwards. And you'll say, man, the only way I could have known that is by the Holy Spirit. Because I didn't know that before I started to speak that out. So there's really nothing complicated about it. It has to do with the Holy Spirit wanting to touch someone else. Okay? The other night I was in a place and I discerned a spirit upon someone. And so I say, okay, Lord, this spirit has got this person trapped. Okay, now the discerning of the Spirit comes through the Holy Spirit. That being able to discern what that was that had that person happen. Okay, but just knowing it doesn't sometimes doesn't do me any good just to know what's going on in the situation. Now I need something to combat it. And I spoke to that person and said, My God is fixing to do this for you, this, this, and this, and God began to heal them right there on the scene. And it made a tremendous impact on me. Now you think if, if you're a sinner and you hear me preaching the gospel, I mean literally telling you the gospel of Jesus Christ, and all of a sudden God heals you, you're going to think, whoa, okay. This God that this guy's talking about must be real. In other words, Jesus is following His gospel with signs and wonders. True? That, that's the signs, the evidence that God is with you and He gives you these things these gifts of the Holy Spirit. Now these are available for anybody who has the Holy Spirit because they are gifts of the Holy Spirit, correct? But then, if you'll turn to Romans chapter 12, God gives us some different things as people. Because those gifts of the Holy Spirit are at your resource whenever the Holy Spirit sees fit. To minister to another person. And I hope you're catching that, right? Because those gifts of the Spirit are really never for you, so to speak. God doesn't speak to you for you. He speaks to you so you can give that to someone else. Does that make sense? Now, now God will speak to you. That's not, that's not, I'm not saying He's leaving you out. He will speak to you. But when you're dealing with the gifts of the Holy Spirit, most of the time you're dealing with someone else. He would give you the gift in order to give it to someone else. Does that make sense? Am I making that clear to most everybody? Okay. But, in Romans chapter 12, he lists a list of gifts that seem to be in every one of us. Every one of us seems to have a measure of this. And he'll say it like this in verse 3. For I say through the grace given to me to everyone who is among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. Let me pause there for just a second. What he's talking about here is that sometimes when we seem to be something more in the body of Christ than another, that gets you puffed up, doesn't it? Sometimes when you're moving in the gifts of the Spirit or you seem to be led by the Spirit more, or seem to be, that gets people puffed up. And the Apostle Paul said that God had sent to him something to buffet him, a thorn in his flesh, so that he would keep from being puffed up. Now, puffed up is simply being puffed full of pride, the leaven. The leaven that puffs you up, because that's what yeast does, leaven does. It puffs bread up. It puts air into it, it puffs it up. And he starts this off by letting us look at the fact that there's no one greater than the other. That's why he's using the Bible. Okay? Jamie used the analogy the other day that I really like. He said, you know, most people don't think about a rib, but when that rib is what's protecting those vitals, right? You need those ribs to protect your vitals. That rib is just as important as that heart. If that rib is not there, right? You could have a mashed heart right now. Could have that three poor ribs. Randy's got some cracked ribs right now. He's nursing. And uh, you know they're there now, don't you? So, yeah. 
But uh, <clears throat> but it's some of the body parts we don't they don't seem like they're important until you until you really get to looking at I need every body part I've got, and so does Jesus. And in this hour that we live in, He is trying to get us to rise up, moving on this path of maturity. Amen. Okay? He's trying to get His church to grow up, for lack of a better term. There's a lot of disgruntlement in the church right now. There's a lot of things happening in the church. I mean, you're going to encounter people who are disgruntled with their churches, they're disgruntled with their preachers, and they're disgruntled with this, and they're disgruntled with that. That's because God's asking them to move on to maturity, and they're not wanting to do it. So they're putting the blame on everything else other than themselves, which is moving on. And I'm going to show you that from here. God never intended for your preacher to feed you every day. He intended for you to feed yourself. Um, just like Cole, Jamie doesn't have to stick a spoon in his mouth anymore. But I do remember the days when Jamie used to have to put a bottle in Cole's mouth. But that, those days are gone. Now Cole can start to feed himself. He knows where the refrigerator is, right? He knew that at six months old. He knew that at six months. And it takes cold. Some of us learn faster than others, you know? Some of us learn faster. Some of us grow up quicker than others. So. He says this. He says, For we have many members of one body, but all the members do not have the same function. So we, being many, are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them as prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. Our ministry, serving, some of your things will say serving, let us use it to serve. He who teaches and teaches, he who exhorts and exhortation, he who gives liberally, he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be without hypocrisy. Okay? <clears throat> You'll see right there, every one of us have gifts inside of us. Every one of us have gifts inside of us to offer the body. Okay? Now this is very important that you're going to realize because I'm going to go, I'm going to move back into Ephesians chapter 4 in a minute, you're going to realize that a lot of the strife and confusion and things that come into most people are because we're simply looking around at each other. And trying to fit ourselves into that mold. Now we had we had a discussion uh, the other night with uh, we were talking and, and me and Mike were talking and we talked about um, being able. I mean, Mike's one of these guys. He's like Tabitha. They they're able through music. They're able to get into places with God. I don't do that. I'm not a musician. I mean, I don't. I don't. Understand. I see them doing it. I would like to do it, but I'm no good at it. You see, I'm no good at that. But those guys are really good at it. They're gifted at that. They can just uh, march us that way. She can just start singing and just kind of go into a place with God. I'm not that way. Right? Everything for me comes in a little. And so when we try to fit ourselves into a box that God never designed for us, sometimes it becomes frustrating. Right? Now I said this a few weeks ago. One of the one of our strengths here at this fellowship is the fact that we have freedom. I have, Jamie had, we, we all allow you guys to be free, to be who you are, to grow up. There's no one trying to make you anything other than to be, be full of Christ, to be the fullness of whatever He created you. So if you can get to God, I'm not talking about get to God in the way that Jesus Christ is the only way, okay, to God. He's the only thing that gives you access. But if you can get to God through a song, Rather than the analytical, go for it. <clears throat> go for it. If that's the way you do things, you know what? If, if, if you have to get in your car and that's the place where you really get alone with God and get into it, go for it. You have the freedom to do that. Jamie has three children. We've been talking about cold. Jamie has three children. All of those kids will grow up to be different. Guaranteed. They'll all grow up to be different. Mr. Huey has three children. They're all different. Right? It's funny how you can have children out of the same people. My, my brothers and sisters, we're all there. I mean, that's just the way it is. And God is that way. God has many children, and we're all there. Now, I'm, I'm hammering this home because I want you to understand the uniqueness of who you are. See, because what the enemy would do is, the enemy will take your uniqueness. I'm going to call it uniqueness. Now, what we call it sometimes is our weirdness. Everybody in here... You have a uniqueness about you. There is 